Well, hey, all you cool cats and kittens. <laughs> I was going to start with that. You beat me, too. Welcome to E.G. Live at Home. I'm Denny Director. And I'm Lauren Zima. <laughs> and, uh, wow, we've got some big news today. Big news today. <laughs> That's my Carol Baskins. <laughs> that was actually pretty good. How, how about I got to work on it. Um, welcome, guys. We have so much to get through today, starting off with, of course, Tiger King news. We're going to give you the latest on the missing case of Carol's husband. Plus, we spoke to none other than Joe Exotic's ex, John Finlay, our own Kevin Frazier, talking to him. Big moments from that interview. Meanwhile, as you guys are stuck at home, hopefully with a quarantine partner, you're probably figuring out, how do I cut my hair? How do I dye my roots? Well, a lot of folks out there are getting very creative. We're going to get into all of that. And also, JK Rowling, just in time for all those kids stuck at home, relaunched a Harry Potter website. It's a little digital hub so students can learn in time of quarantine. And also, we do have some non-Rona news for you guys at the end of the show, just to kind of, it's a, it'll be a nice reprieve. <laughs> from yes, we decided to bring in a little, as we're calling it, non-Rona news, uh, the NRN network. <laughs> You know, guys, life, the thing is, I think we're all realizing as our uh, political leaders are telling us, this is ever evolving and we don't exactly know how long we will all be sheltering in place. So we're going to try to make life as normal as possible. I'm finding it difficult to scroll through the gram or Twitter mm. and see things that are not uh, with a Corona and quarantine lens as they should be. But like, you know what? Some some semblance of normal we're, we're going to have to discover. Uh, if it wasn't for coronavirus, I don't think er everyone would be as hooked on Tiger King as we all are right now. And I feel like every day there's another story coming out of it. And now ET, of course, has a, some, learned some own, of their own information. I was going to say, you know, but back to non-normal things, the, the Tiger King story. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so guys... What has been one of the biggest mysteries out of Tiger King isn't even, uh, you know, how exactly did someone get their arm ripped off? It's not, uh, did this person frame this other person for murder? It's a decades old case. Animal advocate, mm. self-proclaimed animal advocate, Carol Baskins, has come into question with fans and people in the documentary wondering what happened to her long missing husband, Don Lewis. Well, the case is open. Officials, local police and sheriffs say, hey, look, this was a cold case and we are taking tips. They even posted a flyer asking for anybody to come forward if they have knowledge about what exactly happened to Don Lewis. And we are now hearing that they are getting six tips a day approximately in mm -hmm. this case. And they're trying to follow up on any that seem credible. <laughs> now what a plot what a plot twist because in tiger king obviously it centers on joe exotic and um and honestly his rival with carol baskin who is a self-proclaimed animal activist <clears throat> protecting the rights and lives of these big cats and you know we heard before i even watched tiger king i knew it was going to be some kind of true crime docuseries carol baskin's story that that's about her missing husband, Don. That is one episode that has really taken off. And I feel like that's what a lot of people are the most interested in. And it's kind of crazy. Well, of course, Carol wrote this big response to the documentary on her website, Big Cat Rescue. And she kind of goes piece by piece into her side of things with Don. Carol has said that her, uh, she believes her ex was having uh, dementia issues and she thinks that he ran off somewhere. Um, but... You know, there are a lot of questions raised by other people in his life in the documentary, his other ex-wife, his um, kids, people who've worked for him, and people seem to be very suspicious. So here's the latest. Um, this is being reported by, you know, CBS News and many other outlets is that the case has been reopened. And um, so a judge declared Lewis dead five years after his disappearance. He uh, disappeared almost two decades ago at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, but Hillsborough County, Florida Sheriff's deputies uh, had said that they would keep the case open for the time being. And that was back in 2003. Well, now they're still saying, uh, hey, since Netflix, <laughs> And this is actually what the sheriff said. Since Netflix and COVID-19 quarantine has made Tiger King all the rage, I figured it was a good time to ask for new leads. Oh my God. 
And he posted a flyer. Only you can help solve the cold case with pictures of Don. One of them has Don with, of course, a big cat. Um, now, I think what the uh, authorities are saying is there are not any tips they've considered to be credible quite yet that have come in, but mm -hmm. I would absolutely love if this Tiger King story continued and this case was solved. I think another reason people are so hooked on this particular case is because the theory or the rumors that were have really followed Carol for years is that she fed her husband to a tiger. Uh, allegations that she refutes, and even in a statement recently after the Netflix documentary release, she said that she felt like she was misled by the filmmakers who, the, I mean, you, you think about all the access they got to Carol, to Big Cat Rescue, uh, her yeah. sanctuary, cat sanctuary, and all of these players in the doc, and she says that she was led to believe that they were trying to make the next black fish, you know, to kind of uh, un uncover the, the, the dark side of big cats and cat captivity. And so I don't think she ever anticipated that they would be unearthing all of this mess, let alone that the FBI would reopen the case. I would be so interested, and I know we're trying to get an interview with Carol. I would be fascinated to know if she knew how many other people in Don's life the filmmakers had interviewed. I mean, they spoke to his apparent lawyers, his business managers, his former assistant, his family members. So I would like to know if she knew that those people were sitting down with the same documentary crew that was following her. Absolutely. Um, so, many people, so many people have opinions on Carol. Uh, some of them, you know, I don't know how fair they are given just like when you think about all the alleged crimes that Joe Exotic and the rest of the people too kind of found themselves in. But again, everyone has an opinion on this particular case and Carol's story. Someone in particular who also was in the documentary, John Finlay, uh, E.T.'s Kevin Frazier recently sat down with him via video conference, of course. Let's take a look just at a snippet. Do you think the filmmakers were fair with the way they portrayed everything? No, they were not. In what way? They made me look like a, a drugged out hillbilly. They, ne they never showed the, the real new and improved me. Mm -hmm. They showed me getting a tattoo covered up but that was all they showed me after that. So I'm waiting to get my story out to be able to sit down with a producer or a reporter to actually get the whole story out and to really let the world know what my life was actually like. A lot of people need the answer and they want to know, why did you shoot your interviews with your shirt off? Well, the producers thought it would be something that I'd like to do to show off tattoos and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But he also suggested it. It wasn't about showing myself off or anything. It was just one of those things where I felt like doing it. So I did it. Yeah, no, I hear you. I hear you. Okay, so, you know, we did all wonder, these interview moments with the cast, they spoke to one guy in a bathtub, uh, John <laughs> Finlay shirtless and all of them. I was watching it and thinking, is this, do these type of people, do they just want these weird interviews? I mean, when else do you, in a documentary, do you see someone being interviewed like in a long lawn chair in front of a pile of trash, you know? <laughs> like, no, for sure. And John's shirtless. And it's really interesting because I read an interview with the, the directors spoke to the LA Times and they said he wanted to be shirtless to show off his tattoos. And he told us a totally different story that they wanted him to be shirtless to show off his tattoos. You know, he says that he felt the filmmakers painted him to be a drugged out hillbilly. Um, I I feel like they just presented the facts and this is them filming. I mean, you know, they're not making John say anything that he was already saying. And so I think everyone else kind of connected those docs, docs or made those assumptions. But I do, I do wonder about the teeth thing because he had also said and told Kevin that at one point, several times, Joe Exotic had tried to give him new teeth, but he didn't want them to the point where he was like, because he didn't want Joe buying him anything. And so he would break them. Of course, now he has, as you can tell from that interview, new, brand new teeth. But it's like, you had a chance to kind of change that uh, persona, that look, you know? And he didn't want There's the teeth. so much complexity here. You know, does that mean he didn't want to kind of owe Joe anything? You know, we get into right. their 
how Joe bought him and, and his other husband, Travis, tons of things in the documentary, how they were all under a bit of a cloud of drug use as well, self-admitted mm -hmm. by them. Um, I love that he wants Channing Tatum to play him in the movie. Uh, I actually 100% could see that. I see it. This could be Channing Tatum's like Charlize Theron monster transformation. Like he could win an Oscar for playing John in the film adaptation of The Tiger King. I see it. 100%. I'm, I'm so here for it. I love so, it. So more of that interview is up at etonline.com and airing on Entertainment Tonight. And we are also interviewing many of the other Tiger King cast members to come. Mm -hmm. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, side note, you. side note, you, you flag this real quick. The Tiger King cast, some of them are on Cameo now. Oh my God, you can buy a message. <laughs> I got, should I, I, I want to look right now at how much they are. Let me see. I don't know how much they are, but it, 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 it's a select few. I, I remember seeing Jeff on there, Saf, the animal zookeeper who lost uh, their hand, mm -hmm. a couple other cast members. But could you imagine? It's like, um, for your birthday, babe, I got you a taped message from Jeff Lowe. <laughs> Jeff Lowe is $79.99. Wow. Hey, listen. Oh, wow. He's milking it. Of all people, I've seen Jeff making the rounds. Uh, you know, he cooperated. We're going to talk to Jeff. Yeah. He cooperated with the government and the FBI in the documentary, and now he's sitting pretty doing cameos. I mean, oh, wow. What a time gosh. to be alive. All right, moving on, you guys, switching gears, because there is a photo that went viral that is uh, so sweet, but also brought up some things that I can relate to, and I know you can too, Lauren. Uh, this photo of a 92-year-old man, uh, he is coloring his wife's roots because obviously everyone is quarantined, hair salons are closed. Uh, his grandson actually shared the photo on Facebook saying that, you know, my grandfather doesn't like when my grandmother doesn't feel like she's not groomed. You know, he wants her to feel her best. And so, I mean, he took it upon himself to literally color in her roots and it's so sweet. I mean, that's amazing of people, that, that's one example of people just, you know, uh, maintaining their hairstyles at home. Others, not so much. Uh, there's Heidi Lee Oli. She's an Atlanta hairdresser. She had to close her salon and she's bored. So she's been trying out hairstyles on her boyfriend, Jeffrey Clark, who has like these long locks uh, just for the gram and for the internet. But it begs this? the... What'd you think? Yeah, haven't you done this? I was going to say, like, <laughs> would you trust your quarantine partner to do your hair during the quarantine? I did. You did? My, yeah, well, my boyfriend... I was, you know me, I, I needed to get my hair cut every two weeks. And uh, we took it upon ourselves, we took a beard trimmer, and he did a fade. His own, I mean, it's not perfect, but you know what? He did a pretty good job. What do you think? I think he did a great job. And by the way, I mean, we are all suddenly doing a thing. Like, I haven't had someone non-professional cut my hair since I had my mom bangs back in, like, you know, somebody <laughs> had 80s and 90s mom bangs where mom was just like, oh, and you're like, oh my God, that's enough. Were you just growing it out then at this point? I mean... I wish I'd gotten a trim beforehand, yeah. but my issue is my roots because oh, no. I am graying right now. I have a root spray on, which I highly recommend to everyone, oh. but how long can I use this? So I might have to really cross a relationship boundary that I don't want to and have my boyfriend, Chris Harrison, dye my hair. I found it to be a bonding moment because I, I also cut his hair. Wait, babe, come here. Come here. He's here. He's at his office. I'm gonna, he did, he's camera shy. No, he's not. Come here. Uh, I cut his hair and I told him, I'm like, I've never felt closer. I've never felt closer to you. Wow. So Great. The, nice. he'll, he'll tell you have the same haircut now. Do we? He didn't touch <laughs> the top size. of the hair. I'm a size a little bit. We did? Not mine. Yours for mine, sure. Yeah. Wait, but tell Lauren, if Chris is going to dye your roots, the key is confidence. Absolutely. Just go for it. You just have to. I think okay. dyeing the roots is less risky than the haircut. I'm impressed. And you're on camera. So great job, sir. You did an on-camera haircut. Yeah. Um, wait, but also is now the time for people to get adventurous, try hairstyles they normally wouldn't outside of self-isolation? Like I've seen a lot of guys like buzz their hair, bleach it blonde. I guess only so that we can all jo enjoy the mistakes. <laughs> Maybe you and I couldn't because we're still, you know, broadcasting from home. But oh like, yeah, we're broadcasting. I feel like why not? Have a little fun. Dye your hair that color you always wanted to. You can't go anywhere for weeks. <laughs> um, I... I love that it's uh, brought you guys closer together. I, I, I'll be um, honest, it's one of those walls that I feel scared to cross. No, do like, it. I want to maintain the boundary. I don't know. But if he does a good job, then you could be saving so much money on your dye job. My hair isn't Geico, okay? I mean, I don't know. 
It's like, I am lying. You know, it's great content. You just started a TikTok. Great content. Let him do it. All right, okay. let's move on to something I can really dig into. Oh, I am a Ravenclaw here to say that J.K. Rowling has made a smart move. The lord and savior of the wizarding world, the icon of magic, J.K. Rowling has launched a Harry Potter website to help us all in the quarantine times. Harry Potter at home. <laughs> she launched this and says of the new website, we know that everyone is trying to keep safe at home at the moment. And so with JK Rowling, we are delighted to introduce Harry Potter at home to help children, parents, carers, and teachers add a touch of magic to our new daily lives. Um, I think that I've recommended to so many people who haven't read Harry Potter before. I'm like, read it now. Now's a good time. Are you going to dig into it? No. <laughs> what? I know. Honestly, reading the Harry Potter books is definitely on my bucket list. I mean, it's not like I'm not doing anything in, in self-isolation. You know what I mean? I'm still working. So I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. All right. Well, the website, I love it. It's very playful and fantastical. Um, it's got quizzes. Uh, of course, you can get sorted into your Hogwarts house. Have you ever done that? I at least want to know what house you are, like taking the quiz. Yes, I did take the quiz once, and I believe it told me I was a Hufflepuff. And I know that, I know. That, that's what, You're a Gryffindor. You're a Gryffindor you. or the Hufflepuff Rising. Thank you so much. That's, I, I've, I've seen the movies, and so I know what, the, what that means, and I feel like I'm a Gryffindor at heart. I think you are. All to, um, all to no shade, some content on this website is free. Some yeah. of it you have to pay for. So I'm just going to say that's rolling really, you know, cashing in on the quarantine. You think? I don't know. I mean, it's kind of a, it's an amazing resource because there are a lot of kids who yeah. are homeschooled now and parents are suffering yeah. because of it. I, well, so. you know, this is an interesting discussion. I think it's hard. We've talked about how, like, look, how awesome is it that John Legend gives a full free concert to, like, help people stay at home. But as we think about how long this is going to keep going, I am kind of like, you know, Hollywood especially – I know Hollywood's thought of as so glamorous, but mm -hmm. when it's shut down, like a lot of people's jobs have dried up and I'm just like thinking about how much longer it's going to be shut down. And <sighs> I don't know. At the first, the very first Harry Potter book is totally free as an audio book. That's oh, cool. Well, the, well, there you go. And you know, it's, it's a bit of light reading I hear. <laughs> <laughs> the first one's, the last one's the long one. For the, um, record, for the record, I did read the first book. I did. I would love to know what people think about that, though. Like, yeah. if they feel like this is a cashing in on thing or not, like, you know, feel free to tweet Denny and I and, and let us know. Oh, God, I'm going to get a lot of hate. Potter oh, no. It's, you. It's okay. Well, look, all right. We wanted to do, as we continue into the, our hope, new normal, hopefully temporary normal, some non-Rona news. And I'm kicking this off with something I absolutely love. John Stamos using the famous Full House Couch as a baby gate for his son, Billy. Now here's what's great about this Instagram photo, multiple things, but one, John revealing that he apparently stole the couch from set. I was there on that last day of filming. I interviewed all of them, ET did a set visit and they were all so emotional. They were all talking about things they were gonna try to take, but they were saying that they were actually kind of told like, you can't really take anything, even for yeah. these longtime cast members. So how did he get that couch? You got his Full House fam in the comments going off. Andrea, uh, who plays Kimmy Gibbler, calling him a thief. <laughs> and how did it not go to like Bob Saget? You know, Danny Tanner. Uh, how, do you think, how did you steal a couch? But do you think there were multiple couches? What if I've more? ever been on that set, it was just the one. I mean, maybe they had a backup. They got to have a backup. What if someone spills? You know, what if there's something that happens to the prop? I'm That's just saying, so maybe you got one of them. But I love that he took it. I love that he's, and I just thought this is just a, a photo we could see anytime in any, uh, with or without global pandemic. Yeah. This is just a normal, cute little photo. So and it was funny. adorable. Um, about, do you want to speak to our Quentin Tarantino moment? I'm all speaking of adorable. I'm, I, I'll call your adorable and Radia sizzling hot because if you see Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Oscar winner Brad Pitt was quite shirtless in the film and Quentin Tarantino, who directed him in the film, um, opened up about Brad's method when it comes to being him sexy, sexy self. Take a look. In public, Brad is kind of shy about stuff like that. Oh, really? At the same time, he knows exactly what time it is. Yes! Of course he knows He's what time it is. Uh, he knows. You know, so it's like, uh, um, uh, I go, 
Okay, so I'm thinking maybe like you know, okay, you unbutton uh, you unbutton the Hawaiian shirt and peel that yeah. off, and then peel off uh, the champion T-shirt. And like, was this on the day? You yeah, yeah on the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're on the roof, all right. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> really? Want me to go through all that button? <laughs> I just I just take it off in one big go. Uh, yeah. Like, yes, I'm like, okay, that's this guy knows. He knows. He knows exactly he knows. what time it is. Give the people uh, what they I, want. I, 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 Hello, it's Brad Pitt. He knows exactly what he's doing. He doesn't need any direction when it comes to being that smoldering. I look, the man has built a career not just on his talent, but like initially it was kicked off with his smolderingness. Thelma and Louise, he was that oh. shirtless cowboy. So he's been doing it for decades and he knows what's up. And you know what? It won him an Oscar, a SAG Award, <laughs> a Golden Globe. So it worked. But I love that Quentin Tarantino, you know, this man who makes some of the best films ever is like, yeah, he knew what he was doing and, he, and, and, it, was, and it was glorious and he perfected it. And like, it's a talent. Because, you know, Quint well. Quentin rightfully can take a lot of credit for a lot of things, but he's like, when it comes to that part, that's all Brad. And that's you know it. what? Brad, that is a master class. So thank you, sir. <laughs> like, it was the best way to compliment him in a way that you're like, oh, okay, but it, it is a compliment. Um, our last bit of non-Rona news. It is April Fool's Day. Ugh. I so hate this, this all day. I, well, this has a little bit of a corona quarantine lens to it because... I saw April Fool's Day is canceled, right? Like I saw it trending. Yes. People were saying, don't, we can't take it this year. And you know why? Because 2020 has been a <laughs> joke. The whole year so far has been a joke. I don't, I think we can take a break from this, this year's April Fool's, okay? It feels like we're living out one big April Fool's joke, so. I mean, the best tweet that I saw was, could God just reach down today and say, April Fool's Corona isn't real? That would Just be kidding. Could you imagine? A I dark, wish. dark joke, God, but you know, um, I agree it's canceled. I think our hearts can't take it. I think uh -uh. that the real news is so crazy right now that we don't need any pranks. We're done. We just need like normal everyday laughs, okay? We don't need pranks. I don't like the pranks. I've never liked April Fool's because of the pranks, okay? Pranked big in the past. But That's how I film. All right, well, you guys, that does it for this edition of ET Live at Home. I don't even know what day it is, but I think we'll be back tomorrow. Yes, Lauren? Yes, and I'm going to say happy April 1st. It's a new month. Here we go. We love that. All right, cheers, y'all. Yeah.